Hello. Good morning. How are you today? Oh, that's good. Now, I'll, I'll admit it, uh, I normally don't get nervous doing stand-up comedy anymore. I, I don't. But this morning, I felt a bit nervous because this is different from anything I ever do. I normally perform in front of drunken crowds, I guess, on a, on a weekend, on a weekday, in a controlled environment, a comedy club. It's all smoky and hazy. And today I have to come and do a set in front of you guys on a Saturday morning <laughs> in Norwich. And you know the worst part is, the worst part is that you're sober. So, okay, good, we got the first laugh, so okay. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, I am here to talk about stand-up comedy, but you know, I did think to myself, when, when, when scientists do a TED talk, they, they bring like some sciencey stuff, you know, they do like a demonstration. When musicians do a TED talk, they bring some instruments and do some music. So I guess it's only right that I do a little bit of comedy, right? I mean, that's the whole point, it's okay. But for me to do that, ladies and gentlemen, I need to make sure that there's, there's trust between us. We need to have, you need to believe me that whichever way this is going to go, I've thought it out and there's a bigger theme that I'm going for. So just hang tight. All right, so let me start. So my name is Nelson Tinashe Gomba Komba Jr. the second. I always tell the ladies the name Nelson Tinashe Gomba Komba Jr. the second is the shortest thing about me and uh, that, <laughs> that, that never gets old. Um, I'm half black, half Chinese. My father doesn't like that joke, but our neighbor, Mr. Chang, thinks it's really funny. It's like, it's like he comes up to me, he's like, Nelson, I really like that Chinese joke. She, she, she. So that's how you say thank you in Chinese, right? I have a hairy wife. She's like, she's so hairy. She's got, she's got hair on her back. She's like, she's, she's hairy everywhere, except for her eyebrows. That is where she draws the line. Uh, <laughs> that right there is a pun. I'll, it, it will all make sense at the end. I, I have thought it out, I promise. <laughs> but I have to kind of, you know, do this, because that's how comedians do. Yeah. But I'll tell you something that happened to me recently. The other day, me and the hairy wife were watching Fifty Shades of Grey, and I was like, baby, let's recreate this. So, so my hairy wife, she chased me up, right? She chased me up, and then she starts whipping me, like whip, whip, whip. And I soon found out it's really hard to say the safe word when you have that bow gag in your mouth. I was like, stop! Stop! Black Lives Matter, stop! We were meant to recreate Fifty Shades of Grey, but we ended up recreating 12 Years a Slave. I was like, stop, stop. You guys need to trust me. I've thought this out, OK? There's a bigger theme we're working towards here. So the other day, right, I was on a bus, and there was this lady who was breastfeeding. And then this man stood up. He was like, ma'am, stop breastfeeding in public. And then everyone remained silent and awkward because that's such a weird thing to say in public, right? And then the man stood up again. He was like, ma'am, stop breastfeeding in public. And then I thought to myself, this is my one chance to stand up for women's rights. So I pulled the boobies out of my mouth and I said, sir, leave my wife alone, sir. <laughs> leave my hairy wife alone. And then, and then Mr. Chang was like, no, son, I really like that joke. And I was like, shit, shit. <laughs> so I'm originally from Zimbabwe, which means my passport will never get stolen. Uh, someone will steal my passport and run after me downstairs, like, sir, take, take, take it back. 
I lived in Zimbabwe until I was able to swim. Like, I swam all the way from Africa. Uh, I almost drowned 27 times, only to get washed up in this place called Great Yarmouth. <laughs> now, I did look around for a bit, and then I started swimming back to Africa. <laughs> See, what we're doing right here, ladies and gentlemen, is we're trying to build a connection. You know, all these jokes, all these, as random as they might be, there's a bigger theme that works there, is that despite how different we are, we have things that we all see that bring us together. Now, I'm not trying to make that sound too pseudo-intellectual, but it's just to show you that there's a theme that's working here. But um, I'll tell you a bit about my story, right? So, so I live in Norwich. I live in Norfolk. My family moved to Norfolk. And, and there's so few black people in Norfolk that like, whenever I see one, I do this head note thing. Like, hey, man. <laughs> hey, you're right. So you good. I was in Peckham in South London last week, and I just kept doing this. I was like, I did. <laughs> I need a new neck. <laughs> These are things that I see every day. Uh, I asked a girl from Norfolk why she doesn't date any black guys. And she said it's because there aren't any in her family, which is a fair point, technically speaking. That's <laughs> OK, no incest jokes. <laughs> OK, one more. Uh, in, in, in Norfolk, familytree.com is a dating website. Okay, <laughs> okay I, I, I'll stop there. But what I'm trying to do right here is, you know, I'm trying to make you all kind of see the world through my eyes, you know. There's a lot of things you can say about stand-up comedy. You can say it's applied philosophy. You can say it's a way you look at life. But really, laughter is just, it just is what it is. You can try to explain it from a smart point of view or from a dumb point of view, but really, it's just something so natural, so human, that sometimes some things just can't be explained. They just are what they are. Like, I'll, I'll tell you something about myself again. So I went to high school in Norfolk, right? And, and every time the teacher read out the register, you know, all the kids would get excited because of how my name is. Should I actually skip all the other boring names? Like, so what, what's your name? That's a boring name. <laughs> she would skip that, just skip that. And then she'd read all the names, and then she'd get to my name. And then there'd be silence and anticipation as the kids would gather around like a mini staff party. And then she would read it out. Now, Santina, Shagomba, Komba, Junior, Aziwenya, Ama, Wenya. All the other kids would lift me up like the Lion King, and, <laughs> and they'd all start dancing around me. Uh, we never got any work done, which is why I'm doing this job right now. Uh, <laughs> like, like, in my high school, there were four black kids. But the only people that knew there were four black kids were the four black kids. Everyone else just thought it was one black kid was everywhere. Like, <laughs> like Nelson, I've just seen you in the science exam. What are you doing at the bus stop? i just seen you in the drama club. And you know, one of the four black kids was my little brother. And sometimes I'd be able to spot his little black head bubbling in the ocean of white Norfolk kids. And I like try to sneak up behind him and surprise him, like, hey, little brother. Hey. And then it would turn out to be a different black kid. <laughs> and I'd feel racist, like, damn, they all look the same to me. <laughs> These are things that kept happening to me in my life. Because this is actually a real story. That's the crazy part. That happened a lot more times than I'm proud to admit. Because they all look the same to me. But you know, what I'm trying to say is I, I went through a period of my life where I just felt so different. I'm coming from Zimbabwe. Um, I'm living in England, coming to Norfolk. There's literally only four black kids in my school. 
everything about me is so different that, you know, I then started to find the funny side of all this. I then started writing jokes. And, you know, I guess some might argue that it's kind of gotten me a TED talk. Okay, no, it's not that. But just finding these differences um, between me and other people made me realize also how similar I am to people. Because deep down, I think everyone just feels like they're so different. And when you look deep inside, there's a lot of art to be created from that feeling of being different. Now, I can give you a few more examples of how, oh, sorry, that was, no, normally in a comedy club, that would be a heckler. And then I turn to them and say, sir, what did you say? And try to make some comedy out of that. But, but we are in a TED talk right now. <laughs> That's not a heckler. But what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, all these things, that these stories, these funny stories, they came from me feeling so different and feeling so, you know, separated from everyone else that when I do sit down and look at them and present them to people, I'm glad that some people do find it funny. So I guess you could say from that feeling came art. Now, I know you're not going to call what I just did art, but you know, there's a bigger picture to that. So if you're going to take anything away from my speech today, is that you know, that feeling of being different or what today's theme is, how stand-up comedy changed my view of life, you know, it's that this feeling of not fitting in makes you stand out. Now, that feels like a good part to finish the talk, but see, I'm an attention seeker, so I guess one more joke. <laughs> one or two more jokes now, okay. I'll tell you something that's been bothering me of late. You know the phrase, people of color? I hate that. Uh, what, what makes, uh, whoever came up with that phrase, what made them think it was just color that separated us? Why not people of speed? <laughs> Welcome to the 100 meter Olympic final. We have eight people of speed. Uh, <laughs> these are the fastest people in the world. They are setting world records in, you know. <laughs> people of seasoning. Uh, <laughs> people of sickle cell. Uh, that one is biological. See. I, I, I just, I have this, I, I look at all these things and, and sometimes I think I'm weird when I have these thoughts, but then I come perform them to people and people laugh. So I take that as a victory. Like the other day, I was watching Britain's Got Talent and I thought to myself, are they dogs that watch this show and feel like they've wasted their whole lives? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, like, like a dog would be at home watching Britain's Good Talent and it sees all the other dogs on TV do all those tricks. And then the dog at home starts thinking, how does he chase the ball like that? How does he do all those tricks? The dog at home starts having an existential crisis like, am I even a good boy? <laughs> <laughs> It's always funny, though, when someone brings a dog on Britain's Good Talent and the dog refuses to do tricks. It's like, do tricks, do tricks, do tricks. And then the dog is just sitting there talking to the judge. It's like, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> we never practiced this. I don't know any of this, you know. If you have never experienced erectile dysfunction, then that's what it's like. It's like you've taken your dog to Britain's Good Talent and now your dog is refusing to do tricks. And now your penis is just sitting there talking to the girl like, I don't know what he's talking about. Uh -huh. We never practiced this. Uh -huh. Thank you, that guy quite like that. Okay, no. <laughs> it's just that these things make us relate. Now, I did think about loads of ways I could have written this, this TED talk. I could have made it sound intellectual. I could have 
done something different. I could have done all this. But really, laughter is just laughter. You laugh first, then afterwards you then start thinking, oh, was I wrong to laugh at that? Oh, was it right to laugh at that? Was that a smart joke? Was that a dumb joke? You can analyze it how you want, but at the end of the day, it just is laughter. And today, in this short time we've managed to share together, we've managed to share a bit of that, however different we are. And there's something there that is to be celebrated, at least on an honest human level. We can try to make it intellectual, we, want, we can try to analyze it how it is, but it just is what it is, just a laugh. And with those words, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you.